The stages were also revealing who were the quickest in what was a head-to-head -head race. And Imran Mughal with Vinay Shah certainly proved their status by slotting into fourth. It was on these stages that the difference in power between the Evo 9s and Azar Anwar's Evo 8 came to the fore. And although the difference was only 2 kph, over the two stages it equated to 2 minutes. Together with Julius Gige, they were in fifth. With so many and far more powerful cars, it was surprising that Simon Sharp and Raju Chaga in a hybrid were in seventh. The power to weight ratio combined with good suspension and traction was a big advantage, which they exploited to the full. With one third of the rally complete, Carl Tunde was in the lead by 52 seconds from Baldev Chaga, with Ian Duncan in third. Tundo would be hard to catch on the shorter stages ahead, but with the time so close, the five behind were destined to swap places. After a brief service of 20 minutes, the cars headed towards stage 3, 20 kilometers down the Namanga Road. Sections are often repeated for Nairobi-based events, and the next two stages were last used in the safari, but this time were being run in the opposite direction. For Carl Tundu and Tim Jessup, it didn't matter which direction they were running, and were quickest through stage 3, gaining another 30 seconds, having averaged 202 kph. They were then pipped at the post on stage 4, but overall now led by nearly 90 seconds. Well, it's going well. At least everything seems to be clicking. Touch wood, it'll uh, stay together this time. Um, yeah. You guys must work as a real team in that car, because the, no well. the notes must be very important. Sometimes we're using Al's notes on the last two. They're not very good. <laughs> Whilst Baldev Chaga and Raju Semi knew it would be impossible to catch Tundo, their real concern was Duncan, who was putting pressure on from behind. They lost to him on stage 3, but were quickest through stage 4 and hung on to second. Now is when I'm getting the hang of this car today. Uh, going down the straights at the top speed, and now I'm getting the feeling. I was not too sure how he's going to jump and. Uh, but the more we, we're putting behind it, the miles, the better it's getting. Yeah, we've nosedived a couple of times, so now I know what to do. The dilemma of whether to be cautious for the championship or chase Chaga for second was a non-issue for Ian Duncan and Amos Slatch. They gained seven seconds on stage three, but lost those and more on stage four and stayed in third. I mean, we're just trying to go quickly, but then if there's any doubt if it's rough or rock, then we'll slow down a bit. So it's like, even Baldy's woken up now, so... Yeah, you're letting Baldy beat you on that last stage. Yeah, but we beat him on the one before, so we're not all that bad. Azar Anwar and Julius Giga's only opportunity to climb the leaderboard was to push the Evo 8 even harder. It paid off and they overtook the car ahead to claim fourth, but to climb any higher, fate would have to intervene. It's, a, it's an Evo 8, yeah, I kept begging for them to let me put an Evo 9 engine in it and they refused. <laughs> Actually, I'm enjoying it, surprisingly, uh, mainly because the car's going well for a change, um, so far, cross, cross fingers. Um, Imran Mughal and Vinay Shah were caught out by the increased pace on stage 3, and although they only give away 14 seconds, it was enough to drop a place to fifth. Then on stage 4, they lost power but would only know what the problem was once they reached service. Alex Horsey and Frank Guitar were the first of many to puncture, but made the decision not to stop, and although they lost nearly a minute, they had enough time in hand to retain six. I had about five, six Ks before the end of the stage, and the wheel was already, once you've got a punch, you can never really reuse them. So I just, you lose a lot of time driving on it, but you can get to the end of the stage in 4 or 5 k's. Whereas a change, you lose 3-4 minutes. This way you're only losing 20 seconds. The crew on the move was Sandip Jandu and Gurdip Mihangra. They'd lost time back on stage 2 when they'd spun, and with every second counting, had lost a valuable 3 places. They were now fighting to regain their place on the leaderboard, and after an impeccable drive, overtook the 3 cars ahead to claim 7. 
We went 360 twice downhill, but that was scary. But it was a late call, eh? <laughs> so, so your navigator is still making mistakes after all this time. <laughs> no, let's 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 leave that one. <laughs> With two stages remaining, Carl Tundo was comfortably out in front. Vardev Chaga and Ian Duncan still needed to sort out second, and the remaining three looked well established, depending upon whether Imran Mogul would continue. On such a fast rally, any off was going to be a big one. Whilst none were caught on camera, six cars rolled, including John Muigai and Alan Muhindi, who were forced off when a strut mounting broke. We broke the mountain, then on the medium left, you know, the car just flipped off. We went to a ditch and we found ourselves uh, the wheels on the air. Patrick Ibarra and James Mwangi lost control after hitting a rut and with so much damage it must have been a dramatic moment. We rode on that ditch heavily so the car went high. Uh, it could not be controlled and then we rolled but we are fine. Anthony Tibu and Kavit Dave lost visibility when they let a car overtake rolling twice before coming to a stop. As soon as he went past, we came out, sat in his dust for a bit, and then coming over the brow there, there's more dust than there is at the back. And that we lost sight and lost traction and went twice, almost killed my navigator, and ended up on the roof. There were others who just had close encounters, including Farhan Khan and Tabit Kandwala, who argued with a tree. Dilraj and Savraj Bui were fortunate that the ditch they went into had a high bank. And Samira Khan and Anita Irwin must have rattled their teeth when they landed squarely on a rock, bending the underside of their escort. The support crews at the senior service park were certainly kept busy. 